went to high school with, Michaeline um, Brewer, now who's a, um, who's a psychologist, uh, holistic psychologist, and she is partnered with Kim. A lot of your story is amazing how you guys got together and how they opened up the Tree of Life Holistic Center in Farmington and all her, her work. But I was uh, really drawn by your life story and, and how you've been led to the um, amazing healing work that you do. So thank you. I'll let you go on. Like you said, my name is Kamala. Thank you for having me here. I'm very honored to be here, to be able to speak with you. And I want to say happy International Women's Day. Yeah, that's right. And right. all the men that support the women out there. Um, just briefly, um, up until like the early 90s, I wasn't in any of this kind of work at all, the healing arts at all. I was in advertising, and I was very, very happy in advertising, very corporate uh, not very spiritual. Uh, I mean, spiritual, but not really into the, um, the healing arts at all. And I had my son in 1995, and I was 30 at the time. And I had my son, and I was still working at, as an ad man. Again, very happy. But within about the first year, I knew that I was in some pretty deep trouble. Uh, I started losing my hair. I was beyond exhausted. And um, it was all those symptoms that they would say are due to having a baby and nursing and working and all of those things. And I, um, I thought, fine, okay, we'll just keep rolling with this. But by the time it was a year and a half, my hair was gone. I had to take a um, sabbatical from my work. That was in 1996, I never returned. Uh, so what I, the really, really short version is that I had heavy metal and chemical poisoning. So I did all of the chelation that you spoke of, Paula. Um, chelation therapy, IV therapy, um, I, there was no stone unturned. I, I tried every holistic modality that was offered me. I, I've had numerous surgeries, many of them here at Providence. Um, so I tried absolutely everything, but because we're here to talk about cranial sacral, let me just start by that. Um, the doctor I was seeing, I was, a, I was a doctor here at the time, he was an OBGYN, but I ended up kind of seeing him more as a GP. He was a really great guy, and um, he knew something was really, really wrong with me. And um, he referred me to an environmental illness specialist in private practice in the Ann Arbor area. And it, that is what saved my life because that's why I got through the chelation and, and things like that. But um, this doctor also sent me to a PT in Birmingham. And he said, um, it has to be this woman. It can't be anybody else because she knows what she's doing. So, you know, and by that time I was walking with a cane. I was bald. I lost my job. I couldn't take care of my son. Um, who would have been like two or three at the time. Um, my family had to take turns coming to stay with us so that my husband could work. Uh, so I'm like, okay, PT, why the hell not? And so I went to the center in Birmingham, and it was an old high school, and there were just different rooms with a curtain. You knew when you had to lie at the table, and I'm like, this is going to feel like PT. Well, long story short, she was doing Reiki, and cranial sacral therapy as a com combined modality and it was I it was profound that first session profoundly changed my life my body vibrated first internally and then I literally was shaking you know lying on the table but my body was literally shaking and um, she was kind and she was generous and she educated me through this whole process and I was lucky enough to be able to stay with her for about um, eight weeks and then we moved into aquatic therapy where I did some underwater shiatsu and things of that nature, but I was just too ill. I couldn't keep up with it. I, it was getting um, almost counterproductive. But the point being is that that was my foray into cranial sacral therapy with Reiki. And so um, I continued to see many different kinds of therapists, a lot of Reiki masters and um, cranial sacral therapists, but I never found anyone, again, that combined the two so well. And so when I started getting my life back and, you know, feeling a little better, I knew I couldn't go back to advertising. You know, I had found my soul and couldn't go back to the corporate world. No offense, corporate <laughs> world. But um, so I started training with my mentor, um, someone who had helped me, a Reiki master. Um, and she's a, you know, she's a medical medium and she's extremely gifted. So she became my mentor. And through her, I started with... Um, taking my, the Reiki classes, and then later um, I started working out of my home, realizing, okay, I can take this out into the world, and then that's when I decided, well, if I'm going to do this for people other than my family and really make a vocation of it and a calling, then I need to do the craniosacral piece of it. So um, 
that's what I do. I do craniosacral therapy with Reiki, and I also do biomat therapy. So I'm doing three modalities at one time. And to me, there is no separation. So sometimes talking about it separately is a little bit harder because like if you were on my table, I wouldn't say, well, this is the Reiki part. Well, now I'm doing craniosacral. Yes, I mean, I don't, I don't speak of it as um, separate modalities, although people do know we're doing Reiki, craniosacral. Um, and so forth. So I, I, I do my training, of course, with Oak Ledger, um, which is cool because they often have classes here in the Detroit area. I've had to travel, of course, to other states. The higher up you go in the courses, the less up you to find them here. But the Oak Ledger, um, they're amazing instructors for craniosacral therapy. Uh, so I, I've taken, you know, all my training there. I, I plan to do more. It's just something you maybe do like once a year or the other year. So, um, what I what I did then was like I said I integrated those two things, so I don't know how familiar all of you are with craniosacral therapy, so I don't want to um, bore you with all of it, but um, I do have handouts that just um, I can pass you know they just briefly talk about what it is, and then this is um, a diagram of the actual craniosacral system. Obviously, we're talking about the cranium and the sacrum, um, so those are the that's just a quick diagram if you like to look at that. So what happens with craniosacral therapy, um, Dr. John Upledger didn't just, you know, he kind of discovered it was always there. So it's a physiological system, just like your respiratory system, digestive system. Um, it's just that it was not as known. Uh, he tapped into it virtually by accident. There's, um, his story is in the inner position in you. I have three copies. If anybody wants one of these, please take one. Um, so his story is really remarkable. So what, what he was able to find out that um, by tapping into the craniosacral rhythm, the actual rhythm that pumps between the, the cranium and the sacrum, um, you are able to detect where there is an issue in the body. Typically it's physical. You'll also find that it's emotional and spiritual. So you have um, the cranium and the sacrum, which is kind of like a hydraulic system, and the hydraulic part of it is the craniosacral fluid which pumps inside of the dural tube. It's encased inside the spinal column, and you have the dural tube, and that's where the cerebral spinal flows. And so that protects the spinal cord, and it protects the brain. So this is constantly pumping. So what we're doing as craniosacral therapists is that we are gently tapping into the craniosacral rhythm, and we're trying to find out where there may be an issue of illness, of blockage, of tension in the tissue, we, we work very closely with the tissue. We take um, great pains to gently, with, you know, read in the um, handout with the weight of a, a nickel. That's all you want to press. I mean, sometimes you're, you're inclined to go deeper, but usually the, the hands-on approach is uh, the weight of a nickel, and we uh, engage with the tissue, uh, and we try to find out where there may be tension because let's say you had a trauma, like a head injury. I have so many clients that have been in car accidents that say, at one point, you're like you have a head injury. Well, there's tension in that tissue or fascia. And then later on, you know, you have a fall, and now the right shoulder is involved. Well, now this fascia has been strained, and it's pulling this way. And then later, you know, you bump the knee. So over a lifetime, you can imagine all of these strains in the fascia. So what we do is we try to correct, correct, correct those strains and get the body back into alignment through gentle, gentle manipulation. The cranial bones, um, the, the first part of the session is all of the cranial bones working to relieve any tension, working with the suture lines. Um, we go we do the whole body system to um, tap in. And then one of the, probably the favorite hand position for my clients, you have the right hand under the sacrum, the left hand under the occiput. And what you're doing is you're tapping into the cranial sacrum rhythm here, and you can actually feel it. The body goes into flexion and extension where the occiput elongates and it widens. You know, the, the sacrum is uh, elongating, the occiput is widening, and you can actually feel this rhythm. And so it feels like a rocking. And so you're able to uh, engage the tissue, and you're able to actually feel like, oh, there's something here in the right knee because of the tension. And it kind of pulls you in the direction of the source, let's say. So people who have back pain often find that it's something, you know, further down the body. It could be something in the occiput or in the neck and shoulders, not necessarily even the back. So um, when we're listening to the cranial sacral rhythm, engaging with the tissues, uh, melding with the tissues, we're also trying to find out where is the root of this. And along the way, you're also going to find that 
you know, because when we do have trauma, there's an emotional component. We're going, we also find that this trauma then gets stored in the body. And you might feel that, most commonly you may feel that in the respiratory system. So if you're watching the body <clears throat> and the body's really, the breathing is really shallow, uh, you know, that's an area that you might want to investigate because uh, let's say the car accident again, you know, you know it's coming, it comes in, <gasps> but that's stuck. It's stuck somewhere in the body, that emotional trauma that's linked to the car accident. So let's say you go to a, you have a car accident, you go through all this PT, you go through all these wonderful modalities of therapy, and you don't get better. Well, it's because the tension and the, mem the, the uh, muscle memory, the tissue memory, cellular mem memory is still all there. So in cranial psychotherapy, we uh, go into that emotional piece as a somatic emotional release. And there's many different ways of you know, tapping into that. Some of it gets a little bit um, too technical. So um, the beautiful thing about cranial psychotherapy is that it calms down or resets the central nervous system. Well, you know, the central nervous system then kind of, quote unquote, governs all the other systems. So if you can calm or reset the central nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, and get that person out of fight or flight, um, that's where the healing can begin. So as we're working, um, you'll feel the rhythm, the rhythm goes, it shuts off. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to do this. So the rhythm shuts off, and that's called a still point. Mm -hmm. But the still point is like when we're doing Reiki, uh, we're initiating the body's innate ability to heal. But when the body goes into this resting point or still point where the craniosacral rhythm completely shuts off, that's when we know there's something going on where the body needs to heal. And our job as therapists, as much like Reiki, is just to wait. We wait and we listen. We don't force. Um, sometimes, you know, you'll be guided to dialogue with the client, much like in Reiki. You know, like, okay, this is what I, this is something that's being presented to me. My impression is this. And this is all coming from the tissue. Um, it's, you know, it speaks to us. And um, Dr. John Upledger refers to that as our inner physician. So anybody that's working in the healing arts, you've, you've talked about this before, I'm sure, but maybe just call it a different thing. Innate intelligence, higher power, you know, higher self, it's all pretty much the same thing. So we, we want to um, work with that higher self as we're going through this healing process. So um, if you look at the hand, though, you can see that there's Cranial sacral therapy helps relieve so many symptoms related to all of these issues. And I don't know, sometimes when you see a list this big, you think, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. But it, it truly is true. Um, and what, what's beautiful about this too is that it's very gentle, much like Reiki, so that you can work on, I've worked on infants. I took a PEDS class, you know, there's a couple of PEDS class for a CST. Uh, infants, uh, toddlers, teenagers. Um, I love to work with teenagers, kind of helping them work through some of their emotional angst and puberty things. So as they get into their 20s and 30s, you know, they're not having as many issues. Um, I work a lot with the elderly. Um, I think the elderly, in my opinion, feel much like infants. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be very careful with their, their physical structure. You want to be careful with their emotional being. They're so sensitive to the veil pretty much down, mm -hmm. you know, or coming down just like an infant. Um, so this modality is perfectly safe for everybody. Of course, techniques vary uh, depending on who you're working with. Um, so let's see. Um, one thing we could do is <clears throat> you were to put your hands just on your thighs, like about midway, you know, above the knees, just um, maybe close your eyes just because it's easier. Anything that we, anytime we can shut off the mind, maybe take a couple of deep breaths into that space outside of the temples, breathe in, breathe out. This is a good one um, for just shutting off that monkey mind. So take three breaths into the temple, exhale from the temples, quiet the mind. And with your hands on your thighs, try to have the lightest weight possible. And then when you have very, you're in contact with the tissue, but you're not pressing. And then when you feel, you know, your clothing beneath you, just lighten the pressure just slightly. That'll give you a better idea. Okay, so now you're going to imagine that you are getting in touch with the tissue. You're uh, um, feeling the clothing. Imagine going through the clothing to the first layer of skin. And I want you to imagine that when you can picture that first layer of the skin, 
imagine a stick of butter. I know this sounds a little crazy, but imagine if you were to hold your hands just like this on a stick of butter, eventually that outer layer of the butter would soften and you would begin to feel the glide in that butter as it begins to melt. So imagine we're, we're melding with the tissue. We're using a lot of intention here. Now, please make sure that your shoulders and your neck are nice and loose, your arms are loose. Your hands are nice and relaxed and begin to sense. You're gonna feel your pulse, you're going to feel your breath. Go underneath that and see if you can feel a slight movement back and forth, flexion and extension. You may feel it going out and in, outward, inward. Pull out towards the pinky, back in towards the thumb. If you begin to feel that rhythm, go ahead and let it exaggerate. Go ahead and let your hands actually move. What you're feeling is a cranial sacral rhythm. I want you to hold it just a bit longer and see if it shuts off. If you get to the point where the rhythm stops, that is what we're calling the still point. That is when your body is going into innate healing. And you'll just stay with that until it turns on again. So let's say you're, you're engaged, you feel about the rhythm, you're into a still point. Try if, to see if you can sense within your own inner physician. You know, ask what's going on here. What is the source of this issue? Where is the tension? See if you can follow that. And my mind right now is going right up to my neck. That's where I tend to hold things. You might already know where yours is. If you physically know where you hold tension, you're going to know where this is going. We all have somewhere where we hold on to our emotions, <clears throat> our physical issues. So anyway, go ahead and open your eyes. Did anybody feel the rhythm? Yeah? Pardon me? It went right here, it was, it went right here when you asked what direction. Yeah, right. Oh, do you tend to hold? I get that. I didn't realize I did. I, did. I have like that. Yeah, like two lines. Oh yeah, me too. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, and see by doing really sensitive that it was really yeah. Did the rhythm shut off and then it went there? Um it, it didn't feel it shut off. Okay, no, no, it was just okay. Yeah, it didn't shut off and shut on. It didn't mm -hmm. on, but it was just yeah, that was it went right to the area. So imagine that, you know, attention. Mary's saying that, you know, when she asked, it went right up to her between the brow or the third eye. And so and physically, you know, she may hold tension there which could ca cause, you know, somewhat of an energy slowdown in the third eye chakra if you're into chakras. Right. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, sure. there's a lot of um, ways that we can interpret the, the movement of that energy. Um, there's so much of that involved. Did anybody else actually feel it? At the end, I felt a little bit back and forth. Like yeah. That, yeah, yeah, and it would feel like this. It would, I'm exaggerating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it'd feel kind of, this is what it should feel like. It feel like a ping-pong ball. Like Did it? You know, like just a bounce. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, palpating this rhythm, of course, takes a lot oh. of uh, practice. But you know, sometimes people can feel it um, in that in that simple exercise. And so, um, as a what I do with my clients, um, people are always looking for ways that they can, you know, maybe not come in as often or do work on themselves when they're not there. So this is called a still point inducer, and. Um, so what a client would do at home is lie down on a surface like this, and then this would line up with the occiput. So where those two bumps kind of tend to come out, they would lie, they would rest solely right here. And so it kind of lines up, but I tell people with the top of the ear, you would lie on that for about 10 to 15 minutes. And what happens is when I do it, and I've been doing this for years, is I put my hands on my thighs too because I can just, I get there faster. So what happens is you, you, become bit acutely aware of your own cranial sacral rhythm. You'll know when it shuts off. And within 10 or 15 minutes, you can reduce symptoms of headaches, fever, these are great for kids, fever. I mean, it because again, we're calming the central nervous system. We're getting the body out of fight or flight. We're helping it get to that point of innate healing. Because um, anybody that works in healing arts, you know, we are not the healers. We are just facilitators for that client to get to that place where they heal themselves. Um, and, and that's our role 
goodness, and the healing. But um, I think I brought, yeah, I did. There's a little bit of information. So the crystal point inducer, well, it does reduce the stress and also increases your own vitality, relieves headaches and migraines. It eases the chronic um, musculoskeletal pain. Someone already said that they have um, fibromyalgia. Yeah, me too. So what happens is, you know, you know, it tends to be kind of be more in the muscles, not not the joints quite as much. I have gone for fibromyalgia, it's really helpful. And I'm not sure I can exactly explain why I believe that that happens, but I think it's because it calms down my system. And anybody with fibromyalgia, you know that sometimes you're kind of way up here all the time. Um, your pain sensors seem to be more on high alert. Um, so I believe that's why it helps people with fibromyalgia. I found that it brings really a lot of relief, and I try to do it twice a day. I barely get there, but I try. <laughs> this also helps to um, boost your. Do it twice a day? Pardon me. How long would you do it? About ten to fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it helps to uh, boost your immune system too. So who doesn't need that? Mm -hmm. You know, it's better than a flu shot, <laughs> and it does again help your body with its self-correcting abilities. And um, so that's right here. If anybody wants to give that a try, um, the other thing is. Uh, uh, I do like tapping into my own cranial sacred rhythm when I'm working with that. So if you were to try one of those, you can order it on Amazon. It's about 20 bucks, not a big deal. And if you have Prime, there's no shipping. So if you were to use that, you can, um, I think tapping into your own rhythm is also very helpful because it keeps you very much in tune with your own cerebrospinal, uh, your um, cranial sacral rhythm and thereby the fluid itself. So um, if you do decide to try that, um, I highly recommend that. And you can tap into the um, cranial sacral rhythm really anywhere on the body, in your arms. Um, the collarbone is a really good place. Really anywhere. Oh, you know what? Another really easy place is right at the rib cage. Mm. Yeah. So if you have children, a loved one, these are things that you could do at home without even taking a class. I mean, there's some, um, what comes with this now? I mean, they've changed up their packaging a little bit, but they're, it comes with a CD and healing music, so there's some instruction in there. It's very easy. What's it called? A still point, still point oh, I still point I want to pass it around. Yeah, I should have made more copies of that. I just didn't know how interested people would be. But um, so just to give you an idea, um, I've been working with clients for a long time, and um, I was trying to remember, you know, how was it with Reiki before I added cranial sacral in? Because I did do Reiki alone before I added. The second modality so I could remember a lot of good stories so on Facebook last I just said hey I'm doing a presentation anybody that can tell me how they feel after cranial sacral therapy how has it helped you I don't care if you see me or somebody else but, but what are your observations what are your reflections and I got a whole bunch of them by this morning so I'm just going to read a couple just to give you an idea this um, client says, I can assess to CST, cranial sacral therapy, reducing post-concussive syndrome symptoms. Uh, this person walks with a cane. She's had several concussions and um, to the point that she had to go through a lot of serious testing and make sure that it wasn't um, permanent. The good news is that a lot of what's going on with her neurologically can be healed. Um, so she, she was saying that her symptoms of dizziness, her gait is off, she gets confused, she really can't drive very often. The cranial sacral therapy has helped with that quite profoundly. And what's really good news is that her neurologist recommended cranial sacral therapy. Yay. So anytime you can get a medical person yes. to uh, refer to any one of us that is doing the healing arts, you're like, yay, us, right? Any of us. So, and she also has a neurological line. So you can imagine mm -hmm. how ill this person is. So um, cranial sacral rhythm and energy work is really good for Lyme disease as well because you're keeping um, those colonies of Borrelia, which is the bacteria of Lyme disease, you are scattering them and you're keeping them from colonizing the collagen of the tissues. So going back, then cranial sacral therapy does what? We work with the tissues. We're getting rid of tension. So that's why working it as a, in combination with Reiki works so well. Um, the next one said, oh, this is kind of funny. Um, she had been a Reiki client for some time, and then she came in for her first cranial sacral therapy combined with Reiki. And she said, the first time you did it, it released so much neck and tension from my back and spine and shoulders that I had to adjust the, the setting in my car so I could drive. She had to move her seat back mm -hmm. so that she could actually drive her car. 
So that just tells you how compressed our spine gets. Mm. And so doing something like craniosacral therapy, you're elongating mm. that tissue. There's um, an occipital release that we do, and you're actually uh, creating some space at the top of the spine and the base of the skull. Mm. So it doesn't sound like a whole lot. We're talking, you know, micro movements, but when you take it holistically and in combination, we're, you know, we're seeing really big results. Mm. Now, this one goes back to um, how it helps to come down the fight or flight and to reset the nervous system. This client says, it's like my body just exhales. Let's say exhales. Um, I seem to pick up a lot of neg negative energy, and this helps me make me sit. Uh, the first time uh, after go glow was like walking on clouds. We also had been trying to get pregnant. After a few sessions with you and our second IVF treatment, we had a positive pregnancy test. Thanks for keeping us grounded. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't take any credit for that, but what I do think helps is that it brought her stress level way down. So when you're going through something as stressful <coughs> as IVF, or any medical, anything, you know that keeping that client calm and balanced and peaceful is what's going to help them achieve what they need to with their medical professionals. So that, that was pretty exciting. Um, this one um, is remarkable. This was an elderly woman. She had a thyroid imbalance that caused, um, she said, my eyesight to be lost for 72 days. Mm -hmm. Craniosacral therapy was a miracle I needed. Three days after treatment, I could see again, and I've been seeing her ever since. Two years. It was a miracle. Huge thanks to your wonderful treatment. Well, I actually had to do house calls for her because obviously she couldn't drive. And so, you know, full disclosure, she was doing other things too. It wasn't just me, but um, she feels in her mind, because we were able to release the tension, um, it, it was a thyroid problem. So there is a, re a craniosacral release of the hyoid bone, bone. And as you're working down the trachea, there's a release here, which certainly could have helped the thyroid. We also did, um, we also did Reiki in that area. But remember, you know, we're, we're releasing all of the cranial bone suture lines too. We're working with the spinoid, the, the occipital bone, where the parietal, there's a parietal lift, a frontal lift. So can you imagine all of those little lifts combined, all of those releases combined, you know, probably help to release the epic nerve. We're working with the pineal and the pituitary gland, which is part of the endocrine system. So imagine all of these things in concert helped this woman to be able to see. And again, she was doing other things. Um, and then one client said, well, there was that time I was dealing with so much fatigue and your session just wiped it away. She has severe MS. Mm. And um, so one of her biggest symptoms is fatigue. Now, the reason why it wipes away the fatigue is because, A, you know, it's an hour-long session where they're able to just calm and release in, in your Reiki sessions. And again, we are calming the nervous system. So what happens in her body can go into healing, it can relax, the adrenals respond, the whole endocrine system responds, the respiratory system responds, even digestion. So that's usually people get up and they're like, they just say, I feel lighter, I feel calmer, I feel changed. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a really big deal. Um, another one, um, I get referrals a lot from chiropractors which I'm so grateful for. And it, this works in concert really well. You know, I might ship them back to the chiropractor and say, well, you know, get a good adjustment here and then we'll keep going. So we kind of uh, ping pong them back and forth. But um, this one says, my chiropractor recommended CST. I've seen several practitioners over the years. I always feel better after a CST routine. So glad you'd come close and convenient. Um, She's glad to be getting back to a regular routine with craniosacral therapy, and even her husband is on board. You know how that works sometimes in this field. Um, we get the women in first and the men follow. Um, to be clear, I started this path after rejecting surgery for a swollen spinal cord and a host of other autoimmune symptoms. I believe many things came together for healing, including craniosacral therapy. And thanks for providing wonderful services. Um, and we have another one who had, um, she had a chemical lung issue it was it was a work related thing and she had been on an um, inhaler for months and she was having a lot of difficulty breathing and she's a blues singer mm. and a really good friend of mine and a complete skeptic yeah. so i just said come see me i'm not going to charge you and if it doesn't help you know fine you can tell all our friends you know but if it helps what have you got to lose so you know i did the combination of raking cranial psychotherapy but when we got to the respiratory area 
there's a respiratory release in cranial psychotherapy. So we worked really um, closely with the tissue, um, speaking with the lungs, speaking with the whole respiratory area of bronchial tubes. And um, that release, she could feel, I mean, it, it's palpable for me, of course, but I mean, literally it was palpable for her. She could feel it. And within that, there was a lot of emotion. So it was the emotion of the trauma of having this, uh, let's say, chemical poisoning, because that's basically what it ended up being. So there's that. But then, you know, you go underneath that three layers, and there is all of this other uh, trauma that she had held in her heart chakra and primarily her lungs. Um, we tend to universally carry grief in our lungs. And she had lost her brother when they were in high school. So there was still, I mean, we all know that grief is a process and it doesn't really ever end, but she had, it was stuck there. So what we had talked about is the fact that, yeah, this chemical, um, it happened, but she, her toxic load was so high, emotionally, physically, spiritually, that this chemical just pushed her over, you know, emptied that load. And that's really what happened to me when I had chemical, heavy metal poisoning too. It didn't happen overnight. You know, my toxic load just got too heavy. So um, that is, I just thought I'd share a few of those with you just because they're really recent. <laughs> I didn't have to struggle to get those. Um, let's see. I don't know what time we have. Okay, so um, that's it, all of it in a very fast nutshell. And I, I'm just wondering if anybody has any questions. Yeah. How long does it, how many sessions does a general person take? Let's say, and how many sessions did she go through before you got her one. feeling well? In her case, one, I know it's crazy. And um, it, oh. yeah, I know. And so I have some clients that come in and they're really, really acute. And I'm sure you all experience this in your um, practices. But so she, sometimes when they're really, really acute, it's actually better because you have so much to work with and it hasn't gotten layers and it hasn't gotten worse. And so she, well, she had been sick for about a month, but she was still pretty cute when I saw her. So um, one session. Now, right now, she doesn't plan to come back, but she has not used her inhaler. She just Facebooked again and said she's still not using her inhaler. And, you know, and the fatigue is lessened. So is she 100%? Absolutely not. But we made a lot of progress that day. And I heard you correct and say we. It is we. I mean, I'm just I'm just a channel, man. I'm, I'm just there to work, with, to work with them and to listen. So, but... People that come in, um, we highly recommend doing like three sessions close together so that we can, you know, make where would be like a week apart, let's say. Mm -hmm. And then usually, but after that third session, we're able to really tell what kind of progress we've made, what progress still needs to be made. And at that point, can we start spacing these out a little further? You know, sometimes people go to three weeks or a month or people still want to keep coming up and need to get after this. Um, I usually, after we get through the acute phase and people are seeing um, progress and that progress is sticking, uh, they usually come once a month. I have people that have been with me for about six years and I just, they come once a month like those NAMI people, once a month mm -hmm. like clockwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know what it is, it's like once you get to this healthy state, you're like, wow, this is what I was born to be. I was born to be healthy and happy and whole. So when you start getting off of that path for whatever reason, um, People find that modalities like this really help them stay in that state of wholeness. And I believe that's why they come back every month for so years. Let's say just an average person coming in. How long? How does that feel? Now put your hands on your rib cage. Just really gently, not too much. And just close your eyes and see. Now the rib cage, you might feel the rhythm like this very gently. Um, does that feel differently than when you tried the still point before? I have no idea where I had it. I think I had it at the baseline. Yeah. Like this to try to. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're aiming for the higher. But we're yeah. aiming right for. Oh, just say the peak of it, I guess. Right? Yeah. You can right feel the those bumps. And not the bottom of the bumps, obviously, because right. you're lying on yeah, something. Like that. So it's not going to curve. be the, the curve or the bottom of the bumps. Exactly. Good it's point. Not. It's going to be. The where top the, is going the top to be, of the like, ear. This is your is head, so yeah. it's going to be like right here. Mm -hmm. And if you go too, if you go right in here, you're not lining up properly. So, so let's I'll say, move my hair out of the way. Just I would imagine I'll <laughs> show at the right spot. You can tell you're at the right. Yeah, spot. Yeah, you can so begin to. Yeah, I know when I. Yeah. Absolutely. 
but it takes a little takes a little doing. So you're just lining up those two bumps of the oxa like put right on top of the two bumps of the steel point inducer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You're going to do like ten or fifteen minutes on that, and what it's doing is you're going to tap into the cranial sacral rhythm because remember the oxa foot and the sacrum are you know that's a hydraulic system. So um, what you're doing is you're going to be tapping into that rhythm, and you close your eyes, maybe set a timer for fifteen minutes, put on some relaxing music. You're going to feel it. So you might feel. Like, let's say I'm holding her head. You might feel, you know, widening of the occiput, flexion and extension. <coughs> it feels like a rocking, maybe. You might feel it like that. Yeah. You might feel like a rocking feeling, which is cold. And that, yeah, that's when you're tapping to the rhythm. But I, I think you need to give it a, a good 10 to 15. Sometimes I go longer. If I, have my, I, uh, I have migraines as well. So oh, when I get carbon copies, I know exactly. Oh, yeah. So when I get migraines, <coughs> I uh, use oils. <laughs> I use this. Which oil? Uh, yeah, let me. Mm -hmm. Oh, migraine, uh, deep relief, um, anything that's for pain, peace yeah, and calming. Yeah, I want to make sure you get the right one. So she probably use it well. Set point. Set. Still, still, still point. Still point. Still point. Still point. Yeah. I always yeah. tell my clients just to order them off of Amazon. Oh, I, know. I love Amazon Prime. It's just cheaper. Yeah. yeah. And you'll, 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 you will get, um, with your still plan under, sir, uh, when you I order that, they, you'll, you'll get yeah. diagrams, yeah, you know, good. and it shows you pretty easily. Yeah. Try to figure. But nothing like China. Right? Well, my husband oh, yeah, is finally get the cluster headaches are starting to go oh, away. It's really? been like three months. Yeah. Oh, torture. So that's why I was like, well, see, that's why when they go too. back to like hormones, that's why this is so the cranial sacral therapy is so cool too. Because um, if you're coming down the CNS, which um, governs all those symptoms, symptoms systems, including the endocrine system, you're actually going into hormonal balance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I could do that. Yeah. Oh that's why I have a biomedical. I was just thinking about like, okay, I need to get <laughs> Or yeah, yeah. this. It would be, and I'll tell you the best place to get it for the yeah. best price. Yeah. So is it like me? Okay, go ahead and lie back and I'll get like there is starting this session. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> it's going to get me all the way to your head of my hand. Okay, go ahead and down. Okay, so start feeling the head. Go ahead and bring it up a little bit. Perfect. So we're going to aim for the base of the skull, the occiput. You're going to feel two bony little bumps. And that's what we're going to do is we're going to put at the top of the bumps where you feel my fingertips. Yeah. That's going to sit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah. So you can do well, that's just when I get a headache. Yes, that's yes. when I rub it. Exactly. The so they're already tender, aren't they? Yes. Oh, so yes. when we put the, the still point inducer right there, it's going to be tender. It's not always comfortable, by the way. Paula. Right. Yeah, it might actually hurt a little bit. Yeah. Be but okay it, with that. It, that dissipates. It doesn't stay. Okay, so now does that feel like it was where my fingertips Pam, are you still here? I think I lost her. Did we lose them? Oh, no, recording. Okay. It's recording. I'm here. I just oh, uh, muted oh. myself. Okay, yeah, that's good. Thanks. Where my fingers were kind of pushing it and causing it yeah. to turn. Right. It doesn't hurt as much and then, now as we So if you check it up here, if you check it here too, see it does kind of line up with the upper uh -huh. part of the ear. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, I feel it. Okay. Uh, mm. Woo -hoo. Mm. I have two questions. One more thing to go for training initially. Um, for the cranial sacrum, mm -hmm. um, through the Upledger Institute, and, um, when you take the lower level classes, you can, um, you can usually go to somewhere like where do they go? Lansing, Livonia. But I've also had to go to Connecticut, Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. uh, it just depends um, where they're being offered. Where to, mm -hmm. Oh, but then I took the PEDS class here in Livonia. I was so lucky because mm -hmm. pediatrics is, isn't always offered here. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I want to start doing some of the brain classes because so many of my clients have post head injuries. Uh, the client with the um, neuroborealis. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, yeah, so I don't think those will be there, though. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, so just have to go where they're offered. How long have you been doing this? Uh, the cranial sacral part just uh, since 2012. Mm -hmm. but the Reiki I've been doing since 2005. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm a client. I spent my first 15 years as a client. Right. And that's where you learn so much. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you learn. Very true. But yeah, true. I spent yeah. like 15 of women 20 years <laughs> on the table. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Six. Yeah, ninety-six. Mm-hmm. So while you're lying there, you should set an intention for I like to, you know, oh, I yeah. love to meditate. I do like mm-hmm. one of my cranial sacred therapists taught me that where you breathe Jesus. into the space outside of the temples and you exhale from it because it it's very hard to hold a thought when you do that. So I do that while I am on there. I have music going. I like to tap into my rhythm, um, rib cage, collarbone, thighs. And you're just wanting to just feel, you know, that your own rhythm. Are you feeling it, by the way? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so do you feel her stillness? She's gone. Can you feel? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's exactly mm-hmm. it. You can feel her Beautiful. stillness from here. Mm-hmm. Right, so that's what I was wondering. Like, she's so uh-huh. chill. You're not, uh, you're not <laughs> taking that home. <laughs> she, she's going to change the address. Uh, <laughs> just sit in a new one. It'll be at my house in two days, so Yay. no problem. So, well, I'll take my car because if you have any questions. I live oh, like yeah. two miles from there. Oh, so. you're going to be down there? Yeah, yeah I think yeah. probably. Okay. But it's weird because you, I like almost like focus <laughs> on that like painful spot, like to make sure I like moved it so it was right there. So bad. You can all oh, my sciences are open. So, you know, really? Like this. So, uh-huh. you know, oh, yeah, I popped right open. Is it my throat? Yeah, like, I don't know. So, it's going to just around. put. I never heard of that. Okay, can you can you tell her? And let's do a check by saying, you know, is it is it lining up with closer to the top of the ear? Does your head feel pretty straight? Okay, so you now kind of just relax into it. Relax your shoulders and your arms, and let's see if she can feel her rhythm and. Because it was funny when you were there, I could feel you're still. I was like, whoo, she's out. <laughs> so I'm trying to feel it here too, because I think it was like a little shady there, but it's underneath. Well, you know, everybody's everybody's back of their head feels different. Like you have kind of a, a ridge. Right, in there. right, right, right. So actually, I went just underneath, underneath that it. little ridge, because what you want to feel for the actual bones, the base of your skull, regardless of any skin or mm-hmm. whatever else, you want to feel right. Okay. Oh, yeah, and you can still feel it. Yeah, and it, it will feel tender, especially if you have headaches or, I don't know, if you live in the world. It sort of reminds me of the thing you know, like, 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 you like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, like, you yeah, that holds her head. It's like, oh, oh, okay. Oh, like Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, that's what this is. No, who knows? <laughs> Who's to say? They're I don't know. Smart, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They really were. Well, they were probably doing cranial sacral in Egypt. <laughs> right. I would they, were doing, they were doing sounding a lot. Of yes. And they right. were using, they were going, they have uh, rooms that are made out of different gems, like mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. words, I didn't feel and they have sounding in those rooms. Yeah, I, it was amazing. For different conditions, right. and then they would just make sounds in that room, and the vibration would come off the stone. And... Oh, good. good. I have a question about the weekend as well. Yeah, sure. Know, so we treat. Treat. Uh-huh. Really treat. Oh, so you have a few ways out. Let me, um, oh, you're not getting out. Hold your head sure. for a second. So I can show you. We can work with you. Okay. Okay. So you know what? Yeah. It would okay. just be um, sure. $61 reduced okay. to stay so, $61. We want okay. and it's you want to still come because yeah, because the breakfast at 8 a.m. So still come through. Would you come out? I don't know. And have the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, this a little bit because it's only about on Friday night. I think yeah, because it's ten, but it just. It's only a little bit the first night. You maybe want to see my guess. They might still wrap it around with themselves. It's just a couple of years. And then that's going to be like, I think, for the years. It has to be a degree of strength. Okay, so it's just five or five hours or extended. It's not two nights. It is two nights, Friday and Saturday. So you would just, right, if you just come Saturday, it'd be early Saturday, Saturday night till Sunday. We have a morning Sunday part, and then we have lunch. So is that the only way to go? I was just going to say, is the only way to register is through PayPal? Well, that's how we have it online, right? Yeah, because that's just that's just our how our you don't need one. You just click into it. Our website has has that as the right It's just the server that we use. We don't need to have it. I don't think that if you were to ask them directly, you would get it. This is actually your credit card with my answer. You're probably it's all security. So like that tension yeah. membership of this on right. top of this. Exactly. Like, the exactly. Tension exactly. Will be so it's very specific. That's why yeah. it's going to come out. That's great. So I'm going to break down your information. And yeah. how much is it for the weekend? It's a 280 for the for the all. Okay. It includes all the yeah. meals too. You're going to have. Um, and and where's the, meals. what area? It's in Detroit. It's off of oh. um, I-96 and Telegraph. So it's really close mm -hmm. to Redford. Right off the freeway, off of the um, it's a beautiful place. It's 10 acres. It's a little oasis, you know. This is a space. Was that a convent before? Uh, you know, they do have the retired See, priest on one evening, I think. Okay. So that could be a it's more for the priest. I'm in Yeah. But, um, yeah. It's just, oh, that sounds exciting. Oh, thank you for letting us try this. Oh, oh yeah. And, and, you know, it's one of those things where you almost have to try it because you're, yeah. And then you order it, and then it'd be like, I don't know. I don't know, right. but you see, now you felt it. The point was higher than that. Yeah. <laughs> see, because any of you feel, now, did you, now, with, if, with 10 yeah. to 15 minutes, that right side would release, that tension would release, and you would feel contact on both sides of that oxygen. Mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know what I would yeah. say? Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to. Since the sure. occipital bone kind of goes yeah. this way, yes. I would say probably so go knows. from the middle. Yeah. Where that occipital bone is, because yeah. that's more to the ear. Oh. Yeah, and that's because, what I'm trying to because feel I used to see hairdresser and yeah. we always oh, try yeah. to make sure <laughs> okay. that you know, like if you pick up hair, so you always combed it straight wow. down from the occipital, so it didn't have like right. You didn't cut it too thin. Yeah, yeah. You can't have windows. So, so yeah, that's why. So here's a lower occipital, and it kind of runs on an angle. So I would say go from the middle. So. <laughs> Mary, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Uh huh. They can mail their registration into Rennie's um, address is on the on the website. So if they wanted to pay by check, they could also do that. Perfect. Yeah, I was just texting you back. So thanks. That's saving me yeah. time. Yeah. You can mail on your registration too if you just want to send in a check. You know, or do it that way. Yeah. Perfect. And then Pam um, Alexandra, that's here.